Here we have two of Mako's new texture products. We have our white mud crack and our black mud crack. And we're gonna go over some tips for use with these glazes. To start out, when you are first opening the jar, you're gonna notice that the glaze is somewhat gelatinous. It's kind of a solid glob. So to alleviate that, all you have to do is shake it pretty vigorously, and that will make the glaze a lot more fluid. As you can see here, the glaze is a lot more fluid once I've shaken it. Here we have the black mud crack. I've just opened it. As you can see, it's kind of one big gelatinous piece here. So I'm just going to shake it vigorously and that will make the glaze more fluid. So after a vigorous shaking, I will check the fluidity of the glaze. As you can see here, the glaze is much more fluid. It's running off of your brush and still not watery enough that it's like not catching in here. So now we're gonna apply our glaze to our piece here. I'll continue to kind of stir and agitate the mud crack while I'm working with it just to avoid it getting thick. So you can see it's still pretty fluid. So when I apply my coats of mud crack, I'm going to load my brush, pretty heavily loaded here, dip the whole entire brush in the glaze. Kind of let the extra drip off of it, and then I'm just going to apply it to the inside of my piece here. So here we've applied one coat of the white mud crack to the inside of this ramekin. If you look here, it's starting to dry immediately, actually. It's not very shiny anymore. There's a couple little spots. Once those little spots have dried up, I'm going to go ahead and apply a second coat of mud crack. So continuing to stir as I'm applying, I'm gonna go ahead and dip into here and apply my second coat. Laying it on pretty heavy, but avoiding any drips that are happening. So as you can see, the second coat does not dry immediately. I'm going to set this down and let it dry for a minute before I go ahead and apply my third coat. So here, as you can see, we've lost our shine and the glaze is starting to have the cracking occur because as it continues to dry, the glaze will crack more. So I wanna go ahead and get that third coat on while it's semi-dry before it dries out all the way and there's no moisture left in the glaze. So continuing again to stir the mud crack glaze and now I'm going to put my third coat on the white mud crack. Again, there's no big uh, drips or anything, pretty even application, but I do wanna lay it on pretty thick. Here we have our three coats of mud crack. Here we have our black mud crack glaze with three coats that have been applied to it. It's drying here and as you can see, you're starting to get the cracking effect. That's how you know you're gonna get some nice results in the kiln. If you don't see this cracking, once you've applied the glaze, I would recommend applying another coat or two of glaze until you do see this cracking. If it doesn't crack before you're putting it in the kiln, you're not going to have the mud crack effect once you've fired it into the kiln. And here we have some results. So this one here, the glaze was applied pretty thin and I did not have any cracking before I put it in the kiln, which resulted in no cracking after I had fired it. And here we have a ramekin that had been fired with the cracking similar to this one. And as this dries, it's going to have more pronounced cracking that occurs, and that's not a problem. That's kind of what you want to happen. Depending on the thickness of your mud crack application, you can get variable mud crack results. As you can see here, I have both the white mud crack, and then here's the black mud crack with one, two, three, and four coats, and one, two, three, and four coats. So the thicker the application, the heavier the cracking is going to be, and the more raised texture that's going to occur with the fire results. Here it's a lot smoother. You can kind of barely even feel any texture at all, but you do get a really subtle mud cracking effect. The application will have an effect on the fire results. And here we have some finished products where we have applied our mud cracks on top of our new gloss glaze line. Here we have our purple gloss and our blue gloss. And then here we have two tumblers. We've done the mud cracks on top of our red gloss and then on top of the yellow gloss. So you can use the mud cracks on a variety of clay bodies and even firing temperatures. Here's a 
sample of our white mud crack applied with three coats onto a speckled clay body fired to cone six with a glaze combo on top. Here we have white mud crack applied with three coats onto a dark brown clay body. Here I have swirled white and black mud crack on top of iron wash. And there's about three coats applied with a thinner brush. You can see the iron wash coming through the cracks, kind of softens the finish. And I have it here on a larger piece. This is just the white mud crack applied onto the iron wash, fire to cone six. And here I have the black mud crack with three coats applied on top of our weathered blue glaze. As you can see, the cracks get a little bit finer and it smooths out a little bit. There's not a lot of uh, texture feel here. So this is the weathered blue by itself and here is it with the combo with a black mud crack.